So uh, this video is about what I'm calling the honeycomb project and the reason for that is I decided to buy eventually a honeycomb yoke but I didn't appreciate the amount of refit that would mean for the simulator. <laughs> So typically, I think as I said in an earlier video um, from the sign on the sign of the Land Rover, if it, um, if it isn't broken, fix it till it is. <laughs> so I started to research uh, a new yoke for the simulator. For a long time I've had the SciTech, um, the Pro yoke, and I've been quite happy with it. Uh, it's quite stable, it's actually built right into the simulator. But I started to look at the uh, honeycomb yoke. I saw some quite good write-ups about the quality of the yoke, about the way that it enabled you to interact um, with the simulator. But I was a little bit unsure. So some of the write-ups said that it, um, it still had a null zone in the middle and the null zone is the bit where um, the, uh, the yoke moves from left to right, but the simulator doesn't uh, respond. Uh, and also, the other thing that put me off, and you'll see towards the end of the video, I'll do a run through the um, the honeycomb yoke, that it has a lot of the switches on uh, that I've already got on the SciTech switch panel, so I knew that would be a little bit of duplication. So typically, it went in and out of the basket uh, for quite a while, um, but then I decided to um, bite the bullet and buy the yoke. I did a lot of research online to try and get some uh, dimensions for the yoke, particularly of the main body, to see how it would build in to the simulator. But it was really difficult to get a feel for how big it was and whether I would need to make any tweaks, particularly since the um, the panel for the gauges sits right above um, where the yoke is. So here you can see the old um, uh, yoke, the SciTech yoke in the simulator and um, even before I'd got the uh, honeycomb yoke, even before it arrived, I started to begin to dismantle um, the simulator, taking the various panels off, preparing for um, refitting the yoke. And I'd anticipated initially that it would fit in still below the panel, just with, um, with, a, slight, um, with a slight tweak to the top of the uh, simulator and so I stripped down the panel, stripped down various years of different um, coverings and started to repair the uh, leatherette here and the uh, vinyl around the top uh, ready to measure in and refit um, the new yoke. But a bit more research and a little bit more measurement showed me that it simply wasn't going to fit. <laughs> there was no way that the new yoke was going to fit in uh, below the panel and still leave enough space above um, for the simulator as it was currently built. And so here you can see um, we've moved into a major refit. <laughs> the whole of the simulator um, was dismantled um, down to the base. And I decided that because over the years it had been um, an evolution of different styles, of different coverings, of, of different materials that actually it was probably worth just stripping it back and starting again going back to basics. So you can see here I started to measure up uh, the sheet. It's one big piece of, um, of MDF this time and then started here again to cut out uh, the spaces for um, the panels and at this point I'd stalled a little bit because um, the yoke uh, still hadn't, um, the new honeycomb yoke still hadn't arrived. So the yoke has arrived and here it is and you can see that it's, um, it's pretty well packaged. It comes with a, a multi-function stand which in fact I'm not going to use in the simulator because uh, even with that there isn't enough height. Um, a USB cable, 
connection cable to uh, connect the yoke to the main body of the yoke and uh, here is um, here's the yoke itself so it's pretty well packed um, plenty of um, options for um, fixing and um, first impressions are really really positive it feels really solid it's pretty heavy and um, before I even try it I'm beginning to think that I've made uh, the right um, decision so back to the uh, rebuild so I decided to rebuild the, the whole of the simulators as I said so this is uh, where I'm redoing uh, what uh, passes for the glare shield although it is just a thin uh, edging to the simulator I've covered it in um, leatherette um, fabric and I decided that uh, actually it needs to be sprayed black to match in with the, um, fit the windscreen and so here it is being sprayed so the um, the rust-oleum fabric spray that I mentioned in one of the earlier videos is absolutely brilliant <laughs> it takes really quickly um, if you're going to spray inside as I did though you need to make sure you've got um, all the doors and the windows open and you've got a, a mask that you can wear because it is quite um, quite um, heady and it um, it needs to be treated with um, with respect so the simulator is built and uh, you can see here we're starting to um, tidy up the uh, morass of cables behind so first off the cables on the top uh, were tidied using some uh, cable ties and then uh, the cables um, underneath they look a bit better um, there's quite a lot of cables come down in like a cable loom so that the simulator again can slide in and slide out so there needs to be a little bit of flexibility in uh, the cabling um, to allow for that so here's the first fitting of the windscreen uh, to the new build of the simulator and I'm really quite relieved and delighted that it fits so I'll still be able to use the windscreen if I want to fly uh, on the full screen uh, with the full um, with the full simulator so um, here's a bit more about the honeycomb yoke this is what the whole refurb uh, was all about so um, as you can see it's got um, the uh, alternator master and the avionic, uh, avionics buzz and um, buzz one and buzz two switches on the top um, uh, switches for lights so beacon landing taxi uh, nav and strobe and on the right hand side the starter switch as i've said that that is a little bit of an, a thing that put me off because I have already got those switches on the um, SciTech Logitech switch panel but I think it 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 is still worth buying the yoke if you can see here it's a really really stable yoke it's um, it feels solid it's got a really good range of movement so you can see it, it actually moves a 480 degrees right and left which translates, in my opinion, much better into the simulator than the SciTech yoke. And I've also found that when I'm flying with the um, with the yoke, with a new honeycomb yoke, it's it's much more realistic. It you have to pull a little bit more as you do in the real plane um, when you get to uh, rotate to get the plane off the ground, and that to me is um, is really adding value. To my um, to my flying. So also the yoke's got some really really good um, switches. So across the top here, there are two rocker switches on the, the left, which um, which allow you to set whatever you want to set. So um, trim and or flaps. Um, uh, a couple of switches on the right again, um, aerolon trim or whatever you want to set. Um, the traditional hat switch and then um, a total of four push buttons which can be used for either um, air traffic control or push to talk or whatever um, whatever you whatever you need a really really versatile um, yoke the, the only thing that I found about it is that it, it it actually flies great it's plug and play pretty much with x-plane um, but with um, prepared, it, it was a little bit more fiddly. It comes with um, with some setup software, 
it is okay but I think it is not as intuitive as it could be and it took me a little while to set up um, the yoke so that it played nicely well the switches played nicely with um, the simulator the the main axes were were fine and the setup was uh, pretty straightforward um, for those but you just need to be aware you need to put a little bit of time aside to configure um, the software on this yoke and so here's the last picture of the um, the simulator in its um, in its new form <laughs> covered in um, in black um, to match the uh, leatherette to match the windscreen and I'm uh, really really pleased with um, with the new upgrade and um, and with the honeycomb yoke I think even with the major rebuild it is absolutely a worthwhile upgrade and it's added real value to um, to my flying on the simulator and that's all i've got for you today and i'll um, i'll catch you next time <laughs>